Zero. Zero. Let me say that again. Zero. That is the number of Republicans in the newsroom at NPR. 87. That's the number of Democrats in the newsroom at NPR. Now, a new report from a whistleblower over there shows just how far left they've actually gone. And the left will have you believe that they are this defender of diversity. I, I'm just not diversity of thought, right? Now, if NPR were a private company and that's how they chose to do business, we'd simply point it out, probably make fun of them a little bit, say how biased they are, and then move on. But that's not the case. The Corporation for Public Broadcasting, that's NPR and PBS's parent company, they receive $525 million of our tax dollars every year, so, well, at least this year in 24 with salaries for some of their on-air personalities and campaign activists receiving 400 k a year. Some of these people I've never even heard of, much of which is subsidized by our tax dollars. I have a problem with that. Our money should not be used to push single-stance narrative and unchallenged propaganda and liberal talking, but that's what MSNBC and CNN are for. They don't take our tax dollars. But what do they all have in common? I mean, no one really takes them seriously. Because they get it wrong all the time. And when they don't like the narrative, they just say there's no evidence. When they do like the narrative, they, they will put on anybody to say that there is evidence, but they'll never ask to see it. I don't know if you're ready for this. Russian spies again. Hunter Biden had been associated with Burisma for a year and a half at that point, with no indication that he had tried to influence U.S. policy towards Ukraine or Burisma. There's just been no evidence. They've been given a ton of opportunities. James Comer, last night on Hannity, what's the evidence? Hannity <coughs> pleading with him, show us something. Well, all we have is smoke. We don't have any fire. The Russians offered help. The campaign accepted help. The Russians gave help, and the president made full use of that help. And that is pretty damning. And Trump himself doesn't even believe the hacking took place. There are some indications that the Russians hacked Republicans, too, during the campaign, but didn't release what they captured. That could mean there's a file in Moscow on Trump and other top Republicans. I'm telling you, the people who are run, running MSNBC are not running a constant political campaign. No. They're just running a TV network. <laughs> MSDNC is a political campaign for Democrats. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. An NPR defector came out and wrote this piece. He said, I've been at NPR for 25 years. Here's how we lost America's trust. And the tagline, Ori Berliner, a veteran at public, public radio institution, says the network lost its way when it started telling listeners how to think. Look, I don't exactly hold back when describing most liberals in journalism. And sometimes people say, oh, Carl, you're so harsh. Like, go a little bit easier. But this guy, in his own words, literally described himself as if it was coming out of my mouth. He wrote, as liberals, EV driving, wordle playing, tote bag carrying, coastal elite. It doesn't precisely describe me, but it's not far off. I'm Sarah Lawrence educated, was raised by a lesbian peace activist mother. I drive a Subaru and Spotify says my listening habits are most similar to people in Berkeley. I fit the NPR mold. I'll cop to that. Oh my God. I found that part quite entertaining and vindicating knowing that I've been hitting the nail on the head with these people my entire media career. But he did have an interesting perspective, noting that, quote, 25 years ago, when he had gotten the job at NPR, they reported the news. He admitted that NPR has always had a liberal bend, but during most of my tenure here, an open-minded, curious culture prevailed. We were nerdy, but not knee-jerk activist or scolding. Yep. There is no open mind anymore, clearly, with zero Republicans in their newsroom. But I'll give it to this guy. He understands my side of this, however unintentional it may be, even writing, quote, if you're a conservative, you will read this and say, duh, it's always been that way. But then he tries to make the point that it hasn't, but it has. These networks have always been as relatively slanted as the bounds of the political parties, though. Sure, 25 years ago, the opposite ends of the political spectrum were a lot closer together, but it was always the same reporting. Highbrow, ivory tower people on the left were condescending and arrogant to anyone who thought differently. I mean, don't believe me, try having dinner with my in-laws. The left has always thought that they were morally superior and therefore smarter than us conservatives. And I have no idea where this comes from. Every policy they institute makes things worse. But this is its own case study.